All right, this is Awkward Occurrence or Awkward Entertainment. So let's give it a second for a few people to come in. And I'm going to make sure this video is on this correct. Well, let's do it this way. I want to make sure this video is on this correct wavelength. All right. Now, I will be talking about Brown Laundry and Gabby Petito Suicide Pact. Now, I will also be going over about five minutes of the body cam footage. So, let's get into this. Make sure everything's set. And I will explain these pictures. You see these pictures on the left side? I will explain these pictures when we get into later later part of the video. Because it's, it's going to feed into my suicide pack theory. But let's start this video. So now I know the volume goes down a little throughout this recording, but as we can hear, Miss Petito was the aggressor in this encounter. She struck him first. That was the testimony from witnesses. As the officer states, and if Brian did lay his hand on her, it was to push her away or keep her out the van. The reason I bring that up is because I hear people say, Brian was the aggressor. He should have went to jail. Oh, he manipulated her. That's why he didn't go to jail this day. But it is, people just forget. The officer said she was the aggressor. The eyewitnesses say she was the aggressor. Now, she should have went to jail. That's what the law says. She should have went to jail. But the police helped them out. Separated them for the night. Now, if she would have went to jail... He would have bombed her out or she would have got out maybe in a day or two and they would have hooked right back up and they would have continued their journey to Wyoming. I don't believe nothing would have changed at all. Nothing at all. Story would have been the same. But let's continue. So this video he's gonna he's going the officer is going to go on and say again he will have to take her to jail, but we're going to work something out because she was the aggressor. He will have to take her to jail, but they're going to work something out. Returned, and he was beating on you, and you were shoving him. Of course, we're going to look at it like, oh, of course, she's defending herself to get away from this guy. But we're, we're kind of looking at the same way with him, and we have to treat both fair, even if he's a bigger male and you're a smaller female. The law doesn't say, hey, Officer Pratt and Officer Robbins, you can treat people different based on gender under the same so we can't. Even if it makes no sense that you, you you probably could not physically destroy this man the way that he could if he attacked you, we can't treat you different, okay? So all that long-windedness I'm giving you right now is leading up to the fact that uh, if I pull someone off for speeding, I have the right to give them a warning. I have something called officer discretion. But in, in the legislature in Utah, they have made a law that if we have a domestic assault, they don't trust the police to make good decisions because too many cops have made bad decisions. So they say, we're not going to give you discretion. We're going to write a law that says if you have a domestic assault, whether it's male and female or female and male, whoever the primary aggressor is has to be charged. No choice. You don't and she was a never charged. It's barely okay. hurt at all, and the guy doesn't want to press charges. Or the girl doesn't want to press charges. We don't have a choice. We literally have no choice. He does not want to press charges. He says, you guys are a team. He says, you're his fiancé. He says, he loves you. He says, he, he... Now, he doesn't want to press charges. He says, you guys are a team. You are his fiancé. Well, they broke off their engagement before this trip. Uh, Miss Petito's stepmom states they broke off their engagement in the interview. I reported that in another video, but there's an article floating out there by mainstream media where she states... The two broke off their engagement because they felt they were too young and they wanted to wait. So, 
Let's continue this. Well, he gave them special treatment. He lawfully didn't have discretion, but somehow, even though two witnesses say she hit him, she was the aggressor, and no one went to jail, so. Some special treatment here. Well, let's continue. I don't think she was as manipulated or abused by Mr. Laundry like people want to believe. I've never seen her friends report Gabby Batito or her friend Rose Davis say she came to my house with a black eye. She was beaten up. This, that, the third. And this is the footage they use right here to get a warrant to take the white van from Brian Petito's family house. They stated because she had high anxiety. So we can take the van because of that. Something very ridiculous. If you want to look it up. Just a ridiculous warrant. But she has anxiety because she doesn't want to be away from him. She doesn't want to be alone or away from him. She kept repeating, we are a team, we are a team. She can't handle that. When she says that, she's referring to being away from Briar Laundry. People will say, well, that was him manipulating her. Maybe that was just her love for him. Maybe it has nothing to do with manipulation or brainwash. Or him beating her. Or being a narcissist or whatsoever. And that's just the love she has for him. But let's continue. <laughs> Alright, we're going to get into Gabby Petito's photo on her Pinterest. Uh, her Pinterest photos are very similar to some of Brian Laundry photos on his Instagram. Um, they share the same interests because they were a couple. They have been around each other for two and a half years. They have been a couple. They were engaged. So they share the same interests. They read the same books. I believe Mr. Laundry put his outlook 
on Gabby Petito. Now, when I say I believe Mr. Laundry put his outlook on Gabby Petito, I believe Mr. Laundry likes rub off on Gabby Petito. The perception of the world that Brian Laundry observed rubbed off on Gabby Petito. So let's start here. Um, this was just interesting. I, I know you guys can't see it. Let me enlarge. So under Mr. Petito's photos, here's a shirt. She has a, a lot of light photos, a lot of light photos, just like Mr. Laundry. But this photo says, sinners are welcome. Now, this black, you see this black t-shirt, sinners are welcome. You know what that means, sinners are welcome. Mayhem, hell, is welcome. You see this black shirt? Now, that's a photo of a guy taking a photo of a girl, but it says Godard. If you want to go look at Gabby Petito's Pinterest, that shirt at the bottom says Godard. The only Godard I can think of is Godard, Neville Godard. Um, the spiritualist, the Satanist, Neville Godard. He wrote a bunch of spiritual awareness, power of awareness, consciousness, higher consciousness. He was, uh, just let me use my lamest terms. He was wackadoodle, wackadoodle. If anyone heard voices and was schizophrenic, it was never Godard. All right, he wrote a lot of books, and his books will lead you to schizophrenia, um, hearing voices. All right. <laughs> let's just read, let's just see. The Infinite Potential, the greatest work of never Godard. Let me see. Let's continue. If you want to research who Neville Goddard is, you can. He's he's no better than witches, psychics, mediums. He's no better than that. He's a false teacher of spirituality. That's just more Neville Goddard. Oh, the one eye symbolism. So you will see a lot of one-eye symbolism on Brian Laundry's and Gabby Petito's light pictures or drawings by Mr. Laundry. That's another connection with Neville Goddard and, and it's false spiritualism. Which you wonder why Miss Miss Laundry, Mr. Laundry, had a lot of dark themed photos. Yeah. Had a lot of one eye. Okay, this is more from Gabby Petito's page. Now, you you can see that ghost man walking with two legs. That's similar to Brian Laundry's picture with ghosts. Um, here's a picture she liked of uh, someone licking somebody's eyeball. And the rest, just, just the rest. Let's continue. That's very strange. Here, go to, here goes the one eye symbolism as used by spiritualist Neville Goddard. Again, she had Goddard on a t shirt in her Pinterest photo. But this is her book, One Eye Symbolism. That's about space, universe. Let's go, good time. She also had a book about how to draw eyes, whatever. I'm just looking at the one eye symbolism and comparing it to um, Neville Goddard. Right here it is a sentence that says, In this human skin, I am half war and half peace, whatever you, however you want to take that. When I hear half war, half peace, I hear that you have a a tear between sanity and insanity like you're, you're at half war with yourself and you're at half peace you don't have full peace you have a war within you have half a war within yourself let's continue what is this is this more of the symbolism on her page be the change you wish to be in this world 
Well, obviously they weren't Christian, obviously, because they said, "Be the change you want to be." And the, and the truth for everything is Jesus Christ that leads you to the change you want to be. But let's continue. More dark themed photos. I'm looking at this one right here. This brown photo looks like a person torn between themselves. They're holding their hands and their face. This is again on Gabby's Petito's page. Symbols a sign of depression. This does symbol a sign of depression within. Or else, why would you like these photos? Not because of art. Um, more odd photos. You can't see it clear, but on the left side, that is a naked woman. Her leg is torn off. She's being sucked into some kind of vacuum that's melting her away. But it's going up in the air. Drawings of skulls. Let's continue. It doesn't matter if the skulls are colorful or pretty. It's skulls. It's death. Let's continue. This is on Miss Petito's page. That is similar to Brian's little ghost friends on his page. Anything else I found interesting about this? No, some trees. Some more trees. Now, this is just some artists she liked. This is Mac Miller. Can somebody tell me what happened to Mac Miller? He's a famous celebrity. He was a famous rapper. Can somebody tell me what happened to Mac Miller? Okay, yeah. Mac Miller committed suicide some years ago. I believe it was drug overdose. Either suicide or drug overdose. I believe it was suicide. Um, He was a very... His music wasn't dark. But if you look at some of his performances in studio, you can see he had a very dark mind, very depressed mind. He was very depressed, very depressed. He did he did one um video in studio, about three minutes long. He was talking about in a song how sad he was and how the world wasn't everything he cracked it up to be when he got money so he got money but he was still sad on drugs and he ended up dead so let's continue this is just one more uh one eye symbolism on gabby petito's page this right here just looks depressing to me this photo right here on the right hand side Let's continue. Oh, yeah, she liked art, but some of the stuff on her Pinterest page is not art. It's not art you should like if you have a sane, happy mind. Just like Mr. Brian Laundry, he liked art. But it's not some art you should like if you have a sane, happy mind. Okay. More one eye symbolism for Ms. Petito. Here's more depression. So right here, this was on Miss Petito's page and her likes curled up in a ball, arms over eyes. This is a state of depression. You you don't like photos like that because you like art. That's not art. It's that's a sign of depression. Let's let's keep it fair here. Let's keep it fair. If Brian Laundry was schizophrenic, crazy. Like dark theme is if he's a murderer and has a messed up mind, then then Gabby Petito's mind is just as messed up, so messed up she will enter into a suicide pact with this man who claims we are a team, we are a team. All right, they will go to Wyoming, drink some Kool Aid like Jim Jones' followers drink some Kool Aid and kill themselves. This so happened, Mr. Brown Laundry didn't die. Some way, somehow, the Kool-Aid didn't take for Mr. Brown Laundry. Well, he might be dead now, but I don't believe he murdered this girl. I'm not going to believe he murdered this girl until they come out and say he murdered this girl. Okay. Then they got to give me a motive. What's the motive from him for him murdering his girlfriend? She has no life insurance. You want to say, well, he was just abusive and crazy. Well... 
Miss Miss Gabby Petito over here was slapping him around, and he didn't press charges. And the witnesses say she was the aggressor. So, I mean, she never came home with a black eye. She didn't have any broken bones, to anyone's knowledge. She may have went to Rose Petito's house and said, well, he's acting this way, he's acting that way. But Gabby Petito went back to him when she could have went home to New York with her parents. She went back to Brian. She kept loving this man. She went on a four-month adventure. It didn't last four months because she ended up dead. Again, what I believe is from suicide attempt. Can't be all that. Can't can't be all that bad if you share the same likes. If you got deep into his world, can't be. He can't be all that bad. I would shit. Shit. I would have pressed charges. Yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead and take her to jail, officer. Yeah. Yeah. Now I'm a narcissist. I'm this, that, the third. Go ahead and take her to jail. She hit me. Yeah. I'm not gonna bond her out. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you, why not symbolism? <laughs> All right, now this is just some strange symbolism. I didn't. I, I know what the pentagram in the top left corner is. <laughs> this is on Mr. Petito's page, seven seven seven, in the right, right middle section, seven seven seven, repeating numbers, angel numbers. Um, at the top, that's an I. At the right top, K T Z, that's an I. Um, upside down triangles. Uh, I don't know what that, that's not a compass symbol. Got the cross in the middle with a circle, it's not a compass signal. Okay, this would be something Brian Laundry would like. You have a head and you have hands coming out of the head. What seems insane, the person seems like they're in pain in that drawing and in that photo. Let's continue. All right, Mr. Laundry was into nectophilia, love of darkness of night, finding relaxation or comfort in the darkness. And this picture on the right, I really don't know who the pumpkin head is and the girl with the eagle's head or lion head. Let's continue. That's Michelangelo hands touching each other. Now this 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 is the last slide. Last slide. This this describes what nectophilia is. Now what does the es- what do the experts say? This is the first time I was introduced to nectophilia, and I was surprised by what I found. Nectophilia means love of darkness or night, finding relaxation and comfort in the darkness. It's different from insomnia. An insomniac is someone who has difficulty sleepy, sleeping at night. Insomnia is a physical condition. Insomnia is a mental condition. If you have insomnia, um, learn to relax and let go of daily problems you may have or worries about bills, this, that, and the third. Learn to let go. You'll sleep better. It's, it's not physical. So if I slap you, you will go to sleep. I mean, you won't have insomnia. How is it? It's not physical. It's, let's continue. Whereas nectophilia is a psychological condition. <laughs> um, let's just continue. The nectophilia is difficult to fall asleep is not because people who, who like nectophilia, they like to stay up in the dark and think or whatever. I don't see it as a psychological condition. I, mean, I like to sit in the dark and think. It might not be completely dark, but it's relaxing. Get get what I'm saying? I can't find a dark side to necrophilia. Someone who likes to sit in the dark and be awake uh, and listen to the clock tick. I don't see it. Let's continue. All right. So, in short, Miss Petito doesn't seem like a victim of domestic abuse. She was the aggressor in this situation. She cried for Brian Laundry. She did not want to be separated from Mr. Brian Laundry. 
they both share the same interest in dark theme type of mindset. Um, it's suicidal to me. It's very suicidal to me. It's very wicked to me. It leads to suicide. It will lead to suicide pack. People say Mr. Brian Laundry heard voices. I'm pretty sure he heard voices. If he was into witchcraft, if he was into tarot cards, such and so, such and so. If they were into Neville Goddard reading about false spirituality, I'm pretty sure they were suicidal when those demons got a hold of their mind and start playing on their emotions. Start Just start playing on their emotions and the way they think. Okay. All right, I'm getting ready to end this video out. This video was supposed to be five minutes because um, YouTube doesn't push my video out very far to too many people. <laughs> well, let me end this out. I would do another part two, part three, part four because I'm throwing this together on the fly. <laughs> but this has been Awkward Occurrence or Awkward Entertainment, and I will see you in the next video. We are a team. We are a team. No, I don't want to be alone. We are a team. I need him. I need him. I need him. We're going to commit suicide when we get to Wyoming. And I need him to be with me.